Breaking news. SpaceX is about to attempt something nobody expected. For the first time ever, they're reusing a Starship booster, the massive first stage that powered Flight 7 perfectly. But here's the shocking part. They're deliberately letting it splash into the ocean instead of catching it. Why would SpaceX throw away a $50 million booster? This puzzling decision comes right as they're racing to put Starlink satellites into orbit for the first time with Starship, potentially changing space economics forever. The countdown has begun. Let's dive right in. Let's rewind to Flight 7. When we first met Booster 14, picture this, 33 Raptor engines roaring to life simultaneously. That's more power than 200 jumbo jets taking off at once. The launch was flawless. Every single engine performed perfectly, pushing the massive rocket up to 64 kilometers before the hot staging kicked in. But what made Booster 14 truly special? It did something only one other super heavy booster had accomplished. It survived. Not only survived, but came back in pristine condition. No major damage. No critical failures. Just a massive, perfectly reusable rocket ready for another mission. So why, why would SpaceX deliberately crash their most successful booster yet? This is where things get interesting. SpaceX has spent years perfecting the catch technique with those massive mechanical arms nicknamed chopsticks. It's like trying to catch a falling skyscraper with two giant hands. One slight miscalculation? Your entire launch facility, oh god. The stakes couldn't be higher. The launch tower isn't just a structure, it's the backbone of SpaceX's entire Starbase operation. Without it, the Starship program effectively grinds to a halt. Let's put this in perspective. Imagine training for the Olympics your entire life, and then risking a career-ending injury the week before the games begin. That's essentially what SpaceX would be doing if they attempted a tower catch with their first ever reused booster. Each booster costs between 30 to 50 million dollars to build. To put that in perspective, that's the price of a luxury hotel or a small private island. And they're planning to deliberately splash it into the Gulf of Mexico? The answer lies in what happened during Flight 6 back in November. The launch tower, Mechazilla, experienced technical issues that forced SpaceX to cancel the booster catch attempt. It was a wake-up call. Think about it. If that tower gets damaged, all Starship launches could be delayed by six months to a year. With NASA's Artemis contract looming in 2027, can SpaceX afford such a delay? The Artemis program isn't just another contract. It's a $2.9 billion commitment to put humans back on the moon. NASA is counting on Starship to serve as the lunar lander. Missing that deadline could jeopardize SpaceX's position in the most significant space exploration program since Apollo. So when engineers examined Booster 14 after Flight 7, they made a critical decision. Even though the booster performed flawlessly and came back in great condition, the risk of attempting a tower catch was simply too high. Better to sacrifice one booster than risk the entire program. Ask yourself, would you risk your only launch pad to save one booster even a $50 million one? But there's more to this story than just playing it safe. The pressure on SpaceX has intensified dramatically since January. Why? Because their biggest competitor, Blue Origin, shocked the world by achieving orbit on their very first new Glenn launch attempt. After 24 years without an orbital mission, Jeff Bezos' company suddenly leaped forward with a methane-powered rocket, the same technology Starship uses. This wasn't supposed to happen. For years, SpaceX has dominated the private space industry, while Blue Origin struggled with delays and setbacks. New Glenn was originally scheduled to launch in 2020, then 2021, then 2022. And industry insiders had started to wonder if it would ever fly at all. Then suddenly, without warning, Blue Origin not only launched but reached orbit. The space industry was stunned. The space race isn't just heating up, it's on fire. And SpaceX despite eight test flights, still hasn't reached a complete orbital mission. This is their Achilles heel, and they know it. Flight 8 came tantalizingly close. The booster worked perfectly. All engines firing, successful separation, everything going according to plan. But then disaster struck. The upper stage, the actual Starship vehicle, experienced engine problems. Six minutes into the flight, the onboard camera showed excessive vibrations. 
Shortly after, SpaceX lost control of the vehicle. It was a crushing reminder that despite all their success, they still hadn't achieved what Blue Origin accomplished on their first try. So what's more important right now? Saving a single booster or proving Starship can actually complete its primary mission? Flight 9 will be different in another crucial way. For the first time, Starship won't be flying empty. It will carry actual Starlink satellites, transforming from an experimental prototype into a real mission-capable vehicle. We're not just talking about a symbolic payload here. This is Starship's first real job, delivering the backbone of SpaceX's Internet Constellation to orbit. Let's break down why this matters with some eye-opening numbers. Starlink currently has 4.6 million subscribers worldwide, up from just 1 million in 2022. That's explosive growth. They've secured contracts with airlines like United and Air France, cruise lines like Carnival and Royal Caribbean, and even a $537 million deal with the Pentagon to support Ukraine through 2027. Each subscriber pays around $120 per month. Do the math, that's over $6.6 .6 billion in annual revenue. Starlink has transformed from a side project into SpaceX's cash cow, funding the development of Starship itself. But here's where it gets revolutionary. Right now, a Falcon 9 can only launch 15 to 20 Starlink V2 satellites per mission. Each satellite weighs about 1.5 tons, about the weight of a small car. Starship? It could launch 100 to 200 satellites per flight. Imagine the difference between a delivery truck and an entire freight train. With approximately 6,000 Starlink satellites already in orbit, SpaceX has the largest satellite constellation in history. But they're just getting started. Their FCC approval allows for up to 30,000 satellites. At the current Falcon 9 deployment rate, that would take decades to complete. Enter Starship, the game changer that could deploy the entire network in a fraction of the time. The economics are staggering. Falcon 9 internal launches cost SpaceX 40 to $60 million each. Starship launches are projected to cost around $10 million or less. That's not just improvement, that's disruption on a cosmic scale. For every Starship launch that replaces a Falcon 9 mission, SpaceX saves at least $30 million. If they launch just 20 Starship missions a year instead of Falcon 9, that's $600 million in annual savings. And they get 5 to 10 times more satellites deployed per launch. Could this be the real reason they're willing to sacrifice a $50 million booster? To prove a system that could save them billions? Just when you thought you understood what Flight 9 was about, here comes the twist that changes everything. On May 14th, eagle-eyed observers spotted something unusual being moved at SpaceX's Starbase, a unique Starship section consisting of just two ring tanks with something peculiar, docking ports and quick disconnect holes. Why is this significant? This isn't just any component. This appears to be part of the orbital refueling system, the holy grail of deep space travel. Elon Musk has been clear from day one. Starship was never just about low-Earth orbit. It was designed to take humans to Mars. But the physics problem is simple and brutal. It takes an enormous amount of fuel to escape Earth's gravity well. Imagine trying to drive from New York to Los Angeles without gas stations. That's the problem with going to Mars. You need to refuel in orbit. Here's how it works. Two starships meet in orbit. Their docking ports connect like two puzzle pieces clicking together. Through those quick disconnect holes, Designed to handle super-cold liquid methane at minus 161 degrees Celsius and liquid oxygen at minus 183 degrees Celsius, fuel flows from a tanker starship to the main vessel. The engineering challenges are mind-boggling. In deep space, these cryogenic fuels behave differently than on Earth. They can form bubbles or worse, start boiling unexpectedly. The docking system must create a perfect seal in the vacuum of space where temperatures fluctuate between scorching heat and sunlight and freezing cold and shadow. But transferring fuel in zero gravity isn't like filling your car at a gas station. There's no down for the fuel to flow. SpaceX has developed special pumping systems to handle this challenge. NASA recognizes the importance of this technology, too. In 2020, they awarded SpaceX a $53 million contract specifically to demonstrate orbital refueling with liquid oxygen. If SpaceX can perfect this system, it unlocks not just Mars, but the entire solar system. Does this mean Flight 9 is testing more than we realize? Is it possible this mission isn't just about reaching orbit, 
but about preparing for the next phase of Starship's evolution? The evidence suggests that even if Flight 9 itself doesn't test the refueling system, it's laying the groundwork for upcoming missions that will. Each component spotted at Starbase is another piece of the Mars puzzle falling into place. Elon Musk's recent announcement adds another layer to this puzzle. Just before Flight 9, he'll give a company talk explaining the Mars game plan at Starbase that will be live-streamed on X. The timing can't be coincidental. Why announce Mars plans right before this specific mission, unless the two are connected? Back in March, Musk tweeted, There is a good chance of achieving full reusability of Starship this year. Full and immediate reflight of Starship, along with orbital refilling, probably happens next year. This is classic Musk, making bold predictions that sound almost impossible. But remember, this is the same man who said SpaceX would land rockets vertically when everyone said it couldn't be done. The same man who built the world's largest rocket when critics said it would never fly. And now with Flight 9 approaching, we're starting to see how these seemingly outlandish predictions might actually come true. The timeline is accelerating. Originally, Musk spoke about sending the humans to Mars in the 2030s. Then he moved the target to 2029. Now with the progress on Starship, some inside SpaceX believe an uncrewed mission could launch as early as the 2026 Mars window. Connect these dots, the reused booster, the appearance of refueling components, the Mars announcement, the first real payload. Flight 9 isn't just another test. It's the bridge between Starship as an experimental vehicle and Starship as humanity's pathway to becoming multiplanetary. And suddenly, splashing a $50 million booster into the ocean doesn't seem so crazy anymore, does it? It's just one small price to pay on a road to Mars. With each successful mission, the timeline to Mars shrinks. The technical hurdles like reliable launch, orbital refueling, life support systems, and propulsive landing are being methodically overcome one by one. As Flight 9 prepares to launch, we're not just watching the development of a rocket. We're watching the opening chapter of humanity's expansion beyond Earth. The decisions made today, like deliberately splashing a perfectly good booster, are all calculated moves in a much larger game. What other seemingly contradictory decisions might actually be brilliant moves in SpaceX's long game? And with Flight 9 potentially launching between May 21st and 25th, how quickly might we see these plans accelerate? The countdown has begun, and the implications extend far beyond a single rocket launch. We're witnessing history unfold in real time, the moment when interplanetary travel transforms from science fiction into reality. Are you ready for what comes next? So there you have it. Flight 9 isn't just about a rocket test. It's about the future of humanity. SpaceX's decision to splash their most valuable booster might seem counterintuitive, but it reveals their true priority, Mars, not money. While most companies chase quarterly profits, Elon Musk is playing a different game entirely. He's sacrificing today's assets for tomorrow's impossible dream. And that's the lesson here. Sometimes the most unexpected decisions are the most visionary ones. Will SpaceX succeed in making humans multiplanetary? Will Blue Origin catch up? And what technologies beyond refueling will we need to develop? If you're fascinated by humanity's journey to the stars, hit subscribe and join our community of space enthusiasts here at Space Corps. We're tracking every launch, every breakthrough, every setback on the road to Mars. The greatest adventure in human history is happening right now, and we're all witnesses. What part will you play in humanity's multiplanetary future? They've done it. SpaceX just installed a massive launch mount with absolute precision, using two giant cranes working in perfect harmony. While this engineering marvel took shape, Ship 35 roared to life, all six Raptor engines blazing for a full minute. The most exciting part? Booster 14 now stands ready at the pad, with Flight 9 possibly launching in just two weeks. This isn't just progress. It's a space revolution happening before our eyes. Stay with us to witness every thrilling detail of SpaceX's next giant leap. Let's dive right in. What you're witnessing at Starbase isn't just construction. It's a carefully orchestrated ballet of engineering. 
This week marked a critical turning point as SpaceX races to prepare for Starship's next orbital attempt. But why is Flight 9 so important? Because after Flight 8's partial success, the entire future of SpaceX's Mars ambitions depends on proving Starship can be rapidly reusable. The first sign that something big was happening came early Friday morning. Test Tank 17, a prototype for the Block 3 Super Heavy Booster, rolled out of Star Factory. This wasn't just any test tank. This represents SpaceX's next evolution in rocket technology, featuring a redesigned lower thrust structure in liquid oxygen header tank. But why would SpaceX be testing new components when Flight 9 is imminent?